Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lie aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain in flowing for the soul unclean, O oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed, are you washed, in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, are you washed, in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, are you washed, in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I will beat your narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe, and we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Today is day 87 and we're going to be covering Judges 4 through 6 and Luke 4 31 through 44. Father I just ask for purity in voice and articulation so that this narration may be a blessing for you and all of those who have tuned in and are listening. In Jesus mighty name Amen. And they all said a Amen. Judges 4, Deborah. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. Sisar, the commander of his army, was based in Haraseth, Hagium. Because he had 900 chariots fit, fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lephedah, was leading Israel at that time. She had court under the uh, palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent the, for Barak, son of Abinam, from Kadesh in Nephetili, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousand men to Nephetil, and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisar, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kadesh River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and ten thousand men went up under his command, 
Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber the Canaanite, the Kenite, Canite, there you go, Canite, sorry. Now Heber the Canite had left the other Canites, the descendants of Hobar, Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zananim, Zananim, near Kadesh. When they told Sisar that Barak, son of Abinam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisar summoned from Horsheth Hagagayam to the Kishon River all his men and his nine hundred chariots fitted with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sarah into thy, Sisar, into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisar and all his chariots and army by the sword. And Sisar's got Sisar got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Horsheth, Hagagim, and all Sisar's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisar, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Ken the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazar, and the family of Heber, the Kenite. Now, Jael went out to meet Sisar and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with blankets. I am thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Standing in the door, stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the pe peg through the temple into the ground, and he died. Just then Barak came by in pursuit of Sisar, and Jali went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you are looking for. So he went in with her, and there lies Sisar with a tent peg through the temple dead. On that day God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pre pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Judges 5 the Song of Deborah. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinon, sang this song. When the princess, when the princess in Israel takes the lead, when the people willing offer themselves, praise the Lord. Hear this, the you kings, listen, you rulers. I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, Lord, went out from Seir, and when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook and the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, and the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. Then the days of Shemagar, Shemagar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, Jael the, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding paths. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose 
until I arose a mother in Israel. God chose, chose new leaders when war came to the city gates, but not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princess, with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your saddle blankets, and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of the singers at the watering place. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the land went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up. Break out in song. Arise, Barker. Take captive your captives, son of Abaddon. The remnant of the nobles came down. The people of the Lord came down to me, to me against the mighty, and some came from Ephraim, whose root were, roots were in Amalek. Benjamin was with the people who followed you from Machir. Captains come, came down. From Zebulun, those who bear a commander's staff, the princes of as a car with were with Deborah. Yes, Issachar was with Barak, sent under his command into the valley in the district of Reuben, where he there was much search searching of heart. Why did you stay among the sheep pens to hear the whistling for the flocks in the district of Reuben. There was much searching of heart. Galid stayed beyond the, the Jordan. And Dan, why did he linger by the shapes? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his coves. The people of Jebulun risked their very lives. So did Naphtil on the Trarest field. Kings came, they fought. Kings of Canaan fought at Tenech by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder of, of silver. From the heavens, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Sisar. The river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river, the river of Kishon. March on, my soul, be strong. Then thundered the horse's hooves, galloped, galloping, galloping, go his mighty steeds. Curse Ma Moros, the, say the angel of the Lord, curses to the pe its people bitterly. Because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canaanite, the Kenite. Most blessed the tent dwelling woman. He asked for water and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him cur curdled milk. He her hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the woman's, for the workman's hammer. She struck Cesar, she crushed his head, she shattered the, and pierced his temple. At her feet he sank, he fell there and lay. At the feet he sank, at her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell, dead. Through the window peered Cesar's mother. Behind the lattice she cried out, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why is the clatter of his chariot delayed? The wisest of her ladies answered her. Indeed, she keeps saying to herself, 
are there not find are they not finding and dividing the spoils a woman or two for each man colorful garments as plunder for Caesar colorful garments embroidered highly embroidered garments for my neck all this is plunder so may your enemies per, uh, perish Lord but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in in its strength then the land has then the land had peace for 30 year for 40 years okay that was the song boy that was a long song then the land had peace for 40 years then Gideon 6 uh, judges 6 the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of Midian was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs, caves, and strongholds. Wherever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amaleks and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkey. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Median so maiden so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites came out to the Lord because of Median, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt. Out of the land of slavery I brought you. I re rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am your, the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrim that belonged to Jalosh and Abizrite, where his son Gideon was thrashing wheat in a whisperous in a wine press to keep it from the Mennonites, where the when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands. And am I sending you? Pardon me, Lord, Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manash. And I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Madonites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you and the Lord said I will wait until you return Gideon went inside prepared a young goat and from an ephel 
of flour he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to offered them them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that he had in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that this was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Allah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid, you are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it stands in Ophirum of the Abzerites. That same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asher pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of its heights using the wood of the ashen pole that you cut down offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the townspeople he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the people of the town got up, there was Beel, or Beel's altar demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other who did this. When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Josh, did it. The people of the town demanded of Josh, Bring out your son. He must die, because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asher pole beside it. But Josh replied to the hostile crowd around him, Are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Beal really is, really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So, because Gideon broke down Baal's altar, they gave him the name Jerub Beal that day, saying, Let Beal contend with him. Now all the Madanites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abzerites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manash, calling them to arms, and all, also into Asher, Zebulun, and Nephetel, so that they too went up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece, and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew. A 
bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me just one more request. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. But this time, make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry and all the ground was covered with dew. That was Judges 4 through 6. Now, let's continue with Luke 4, 31 through 44. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. <clears throat> then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching, because his words had authority. In the synagogue there was a man passed, possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What wonders these are! With authority and power he gives orders to impure spirits, and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Jesus heals many. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over and he rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on him, or on them. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and lying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. And so there you have it. That brings us to the end of the Bible with Briscoe for today. And tomorrow we will be covering Judges 7 through 8 and Luke 5, 1 through 16. Father, I just pray that this was a blessing to you and to all those who tuned in. And I also pray they, they come back tomorrow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen.